Hello everyone and happy August to you all. I'm making a video that I probably should have been making all these years because I think it's a wasted opportunity that I don't make these videos. But basically what I'm going to be showing you is my entire uh, graded slab collection. It's like 95% of it. It's almost all of them. So we got some boxes over here. These are the boxes that rest under the table. You can see they're actually mostly empty these days. Uh, so I'm finally running out of slabs, so we need some slab returns from PSA and CGC. Then we got stuff more like my uh, personal collection over here. So this is more like my favorite stuff. Uh, there's some regrades, some regrades, eBay, some card commons graded cards. We got this big case of uh, graded BGS poker cards. So that's a real special thing. That used to be stacked way over the box. And now it's sort of like uh, just filling the box, which shows you how many we've gone through. I mean, we must have gone like... We must have gone through like 50 to 100 of those already. So I used to have an overwhelming amount of them. All right, we're filming here on the floor in my dimly lit bedroom. <laughs> and uh, these cards would normally go into a vault. Uh, not all of them. Usually I have like a box sitting out to show off during the stream. And uh, you can see a little mess behind them. That stuff I'm supposed to list on eBay, but I'm too busy. But anyways, I thought I'd start out with the most expensive stuff, okay? So because many of you guys have never really seen a complete footage of my collection, right? So we're going to go over mostly my collection first. Are you ready? Let's see. This thing has a tripod. Does it rest well? I've never made this video before, so again, well, just bear with me. We're using the, um, we're using the camera holder that we used during the walk. Okay. So probably the Charizard collection first, right? We're just going to go through each one. Now, they're not necessarily for sale. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. Everything's technically for sale. That's what I should actually say. But some things I want to hold on to more than others, so the price varies. Here is a fire red leaf green Charizard. Does that look nice? Hold on. Get that camera down a little bit. Huh. Almost feel like vertical mode might have worked better. Lovely. Shining Charizard First Edition. Dark Charizard First Edition Hollow. Here's a 7.5 Shining Charizard. I feel like I should try to cross grade that. Oh, look at this Shining Kabutops. I often use this card to sort of like show off that we have our own, you know, personal YouTuber card grading. It's just for fun. It's not like PSA grading. It's not like CGC grading. Some people get really upset because they, they think I'm advertising our grading as if it's equivalent. It's not. This is, you had your favorite YouTuber grade your card. How cool is that, right? That's what it is. But I, I do this. Our grading started an, a very cool idea where the QR code on the back can actually uh, take you to the YouTube clip of the card being pulled. Pretty cool. So if you're to scan this, you can see the card being pulled, right? So there it is, Shining Kaboo Tops. Isn't that nice? He sold that back to me for $700. It was a pretty pricey. Um, here's a No Rarity Charizard 3. I'm a fan of No Rarity Charizard. Uh, Crystal Guardians Charizard. Hold on, let me grab all of these. So I kind of took three of these off the market, and I've thought about taking a fourth one. Here we are. So I got four of these. I really believe in this card. It's so beautiful. It's from the Ruby Sapphire era, and it's a lightning metal type Charizard or something like that. I guess it's lightning because it's Delta species. The card is just so brilliant looking, but the best part, there's only like 55 of them or something like that in the population. So he's more rare than the average Charizard. So I really like this card as a... Um, as a, a long-term hold, right? Because I'm expecting more people to want that card and the price will probably jump on that every time. Uh, we have some base set Charizards, of course. Look at that one. He's got a nice swirl by his foot. So base set Charizard, 10, 10. Do I have a third one? Or was it just two of them that I had? I might have sold one. My cards are always basically in flux, you know what I mean? Yeah, it might just be the two. So it looks like I have two of these guys. I must have sold the third one. Uh, this is my current most expensive card, the Dragon Frontiers Charizard, Gold Star. Pretty neat looking. Um, he's just a nice looking Charizard, yeah. Pretty neat looking. I can see my reflection in this. Can we get my reflection out of here? Because the reflection's fun, but I want you to just be able to see the card. All right, check this out. We got our Legendary Collection Charizards as well. I picked these up last year, PSA 10, not CGC 10, uh, for $13,000 per card. Yeah, I've seen some of those CGC 10s coming back from CGC after they've been bumped up from 9.5s. It's funny because they're asking the same prices like a PSA. Uh, this is See, there I am. I'm in the reflection. Look, you can see my white t-shirt. <laughs> but I want you to be able to just see the card. So what if we... 
No. Mm, I got to think. You know what it is? I bet I need the... Does the light have to actually be behind me instead of in front of me? Probably. Well, we're not going to manage to get away with that. Maybe I can set it like this. <laughs> that feels weird as hell. All right. And, and I don't know if I sound as good from this angle. So here we have... Um, the Topps Charizard with the teardrop pattern. Isn't that cool? So the teardrop, teardrop pattern is from one of the Series 1 print runs, and all of the print runs are so hard to grade 10, so it's very cool having a 10 of this card because it's probably really, really low pop. Okay. Actually, can I just hold this in my hand? This is, this is not that hard to hold. Here's Blaine's Charizard 10. Ooh, one of my earliest PSA 10 Charizards I bought back in like 2019 or something like that. Back then I didn't keep track, but look, I wrote down that I paid $700 for this. Shows you how times have changed. And there were only 270 of them in the population. The most recent data shows that the cheapest buy now on this card is now $5,000. And the last time I took the population, there were 377 of them. So there's like an extra 100 of these pulled. Think about what that actually means. That's crazy. Uh, here's a level 10 Charizard. I think I have two of those, though. Here it is. Yeah, I think that the level X cards are really cool and not talked about as much. And so I grabbed uh, actually two of them. It says here I paid 2500 and 3900 for them. So I don't know what they're going for now. Maybe they're going for like four or 5000 I bet. Uh, oh, here we go. No rarity symbol, five Charizard. That's my highest uh, graded no rarity Zard. You know, if I was a big rich guy, I'd probably go buy 10 of one of those if they're ever even available. Here is a Merlin Series 2 Charizard 9. I do not have a 10 of one of these, but the best I have is a 9. And here's a really cool card. We sell those actually in the live stream. Uh, so you might pull that Charizard, and he's pretty old. And if he grades 10, he goes for a lot of money. Look at that perfect swirl over his hand. Wow. That's probably why I didn't want to sell that one. Those swirls sometimes add a lot of value. And this one's pretty cool, too. He's got a swirl right under his mouth. Expedition first. Uh, here's another card set I'm really proud of. Let me grab all three of them. So this round, look at this. Oops, come on now. There we go. The camera holder has a mind of its own. It, it moves on its own if you twist your wrist. So the Cardoz Pocket Monster Charizard. I'm very proud of these. I would actually like to pick up more of them. Aren't they cool? God, they're cool. Drawn by Ken Sugimori, the original Pokemon artist. That's why the uh, Pokemon looks so strange here. He's got like a gooseneck or swan neck, you know? And uh, so I really, really like the Cardos collection. I've been spending a lot of money acquiring that. And I do not see that slowing down. Look at this as well. This is a different Cardos. This is like, they call it Cardos Vending, uh, PSA does. But just as Monster Collection down there rather than Pocket Monster. And some of the cards in the set were Prism Hollows, like this one, and it just looks amazing. So I bought this one the moment it got listed. It was like last year, and I picked it up for 10000 I didn't know anything about it. I just knew uh, that I could never find it for sale. So the moment it popped up, I grabbed it for ten k. And he just recently sold for 15000 So that's like times and a half, right? Pretty good. Uh, here's a weird one, too. This is the Action Flips Charizard. And it's kind of an ugly card, but it's, it's cool to show off. Check it out. So I don't know if I want to buy any more of these, but uh, it's it's pretty neat. Yeah, Action Flips is a company, aren't they? <laughs> so that's cool. But that's pretty ugly, right? And then we got a little uh, Skyrich Zard. Some of these Zards, see that plus? What's essentially happening there is I'm telling myself I'd like to test this out for a higher grade. Like maybe BGS Pristine or CGC Pristine. And, you know, if it, if it gets that higher grade, then it will potentially sell for more than a regular 10. So, but I, I haven't I haven't worked on anything like that in a while. That all takes uh, capital to do, and I just got better things to do with my money. So there's my Charizard box. That was 10 minutes. This is going to take a while, guys. You can watch this video at, at two times speed to get it moving faster. So here's some more slabs. We got a Dragonite 10 from Expedition. I just got a lot of uh, expensive multi-thousand dollar slabs. And I have to show them all off. All right, here's a uh, Clefairy 8. He shouldn't even be here. He should be in one of these boxes. So again, we're showing off my personal collection first. And then we're going to move on to like, um, look at this, Jigglypuff. Where these cars come from? Oh, Dark Machamp 10. 
we're gonna move on to cards that are, you mostly just see it in the actual stream, right? Damn, that's cool, team up. A little Jigglypuff. So I don't know why this stack of cards was sitting on top of my boxes. It just was. Uh, I believe these were for sale. So I'm, I'm gonna toss these back in here for now. All right. Uh, we have these cards in their special displays. I actually uh, manufactured and sell these displays, these magnetic displays. CGC display, $18. So these CGC displays also hold PSA cards. But here is a perfect Charizard from Hidden Fates. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, perfect Charizard. I don't really know what that's worth. He'll probably go for more than a regular Charizard. Um, here is my Cardos Starters card. I just outright bought this for like $7,000. You can even see it's kind of off-center. So anytime people talk about, oh, PSA 10 is the standard. I mean, I look at the off-centering on the back here. It's really obvious, right? Pop 21 at the time that I purchased it six months ago, $7,000. believe there's one for sale for like $11,000. This one I'm real proud of. So this is an even lesser known collection called Sealed Os, uh, and there's only three of these, uh, Pop 10. So this card's real rare. Yeah, look at that. Even big Pokemon card collectors don't have this card. I know they don't, because there's only three of them. So I know some of you big Pokemon card collectors are watching my video, and you're going, damn, I wish I had that Zart. Because he's special looking. I mean, look at him, 1997. He's like those other Charizards, the uh, Cardos Charizards, you know? Uh, yeah. Almost no one has that one. It's really, really interesting. Uh, here we are. We have Masaki Gengar. By the way, I would sell any of these at the right price. So if you want that sealed off and you're willing to uh, make me some money, let me know. <laughs> Here's a card which really annoys me. Um, I bought it at a very good price. And then PSA contacted... Well, no, the PSA didn't contact me. Somebody else pointed out that the card is not in the PSA certification registry. And when I contact them, they say they need to test the card to make sure it's authentic. Uh, I've gone over the case like a hundred different times and it looks exactly authentic. But at the same time, it's like I'm scared to send it in to have it authenticated because I'm scared they're going to say it's not authentic. Um, and then here we have No Hollow Dragonite 10. So this is one of my best cards in my whole collection. It's just the No Hollow Error Dragonite. Uh, presumably, it could be worth more than the actual Gold Star Charizard. I don't know. It just depends on what somebody's willing to pay for it. There it is. It says five down there. It should say 22, I believe. Just really cool. It's, it's also, what's neat about that card, there's a video of it being pulled. So it's not only is it, you know, I think it's like pop five or six by now. And uh, not only that, it may be the only Dark Dragonite with actual footage of it being pulled. That's the, what's so neat about this. So you can, you, you almost have like this providence, like here it is being pulled. Now I got a lot of boxes here. Uh, these stack of eight boxes, that's my personal stuff. And also this box and this box, that's mostly it. Um, so let's just choose an expensive box and go through it. Uh, how about this one, the red box? What's this gonna be? Oh, a reverse hollow gloom from Expedition. I graded this myself. I got that from, uh, it's, it's a cool card because I got it from a deal I made with the guy where he was just selling like these junk cards and one of them came back 10. I'm, I swear to God, it's gonna be like a $400 card. Uh, Legendary Collection. You're gonna learn that I'm a fan of the Legendary Collection. There's another Dragonite. So I actually had two of those. Dark Magneton 10 from Rocket. That card's always going up. Nido King. Another Nido King. Uh, this interesting Deoxys from Plasma Freeze. I expect his population to go up. Here's, maybe I can just, can I just hold this over the box? Here's Dusclops 10. Do I have another one? Yeah, Dusclops 10 Emerald. If you didn't know this, I'm a big Dusclops fan. He kind of makes me think of Gengar. All right, here we go. Shining Gyarados 10. Shining Magikarp 10, first edition. Uh, this XY Promo Snorlax. Really neat, right? Shining Steelix 10. Shining Tyranitar, Shining Mewtwo. I want another Shining Tyranitar, actually. He's one of my favorite cards from my childhood. I never owned him as a child. This is a perfect Absol from Triumphant. Look at that. I'm not an Absol collector, so that one could definitely be sold. Magneton 10. I just don't know what a perfect's worth. Here's Moltres 10, especially now that they're not grading them. Does that make them more valuable, or does it make them like less valuable, like annoying almost? <laughs> uh, here's, wow, look at that swirl. Here's Blaine's Moltres, very beautiful. That card's maintaining value, I noted. Dialga. Let's see. Ooh, Legendary Collection Dark Raichu. Isn't that cool? Love that card, man. Here is a Dragonite EX10. He's just a cool card. 
Ah, Shining Tyranitar 10. Damn. Rockets me. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I should have this one up on the table. So that one should be available up on the table. Because I think if I manage to sell that one, I'm going to go grab another one. Dialga 10. Here is Garchomp 10. I got this card for a really good deal. So that's why I, I like them. I like to see them. Rayquaza 10. Here's another Tyranitar from Expedition. I got one of these Tyranitars for just $1,000. Somebody listed them too cheap. Uh, Legendary Collection Arcanine. These used to be sorted. They're not so sorted anymore. Uh, I like to snatch up these Mew, Mew Nines. I think they're very pretty, and the Tens are so rare that I suspect that the Nines are going to go up in value. So that was cool. Those are kind of like English vintage cards is what they are. Uh, I believe I have another box. Is this a, a, yeah, so I got another box right here. So here is a uh, Jungle Electrode. I was a big fan of Electrode, if you didn't know that. Here's Kabutops Crystal. Ho-Oh Crystal. That's pretty cool, right? So he's like a $6,000 card, I'm pretty sure. Dark Slowbro. Dark Slowbro again. I'm a big Slowbro fan. Any Psychic or Ghost type, really, I was a big fan of. Dark Raichu. Dragonite 10. He's always a solid card. He's like one of those conservative cards you can collect. Kabutops. This is Aquapolis Hollow Umbreon. So he's he's expensive. I think he's like three or four thousand. Rock is Aptos. That was one of my favorite cards from my childhood, but nobody else seems to like it because he doesn't go for as much. Look at that Crystal Lugia. I think he's like ten thousand dollars or something like that. Crystal Lugia. He's expensive. Uh, first edition Snorlax. This was also one of my better purchases. He just really never comes down in price. He's very expensive. I think I picked mine up right there. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So I think I could sell this for $5,000 and double my money, and he'd sell in a heartbeat because you never see him for that price anymore. He's just really... Everyone always wants like $10,000 for him. Dark Dragonite. I wouldn't sell him. I just want to hold him. I should have bought two of them. That's what I should have done. Uh, oh, this is really weird. It's an Error Dragonite card. Obviously an Error. Okay. Here is Crystal Crobat. Uh, here we are. PSA 10 XY Euro Snorlax again. Very interesting card. PSA 10 XY Evolutions Magneton. Not a lot of these in existence. Pop 4 it's in on the front. Electivire LX. There's another Hollow Dark Dragonite. Dark Blastoise. Another Tyranitar. You've seen that before. Legendary Collection Dark Slowbro. So these are all kind of like in an affordable range. They're not like $40,000, $100,000 cards. Regular people can actually buy these cards somewhat. <laughs> They're like the price of a used car, some of them. But... Uh, What's interesting about a strategy where you never really collect $100,000 cards is your clientele includes all the rich guys, but also all the sort of average income guys who are making maybe $55 a year. Wow, man, I love this card. This might be one of my favorite cards right here. Legendary Collection Dark Dragonite. I wish I had like 10 of those. That's insane looking. Rocket Scyther. Neo Destiny, Shiny Noctow, Shining Kabutops again. When I was a kid, I actually owned Shining Kabutops. Did you guys know that? Now, I didn't own the Shining Tyranitar, but God, I wanted one. I wanted one so bad. And now I'm an adult and I have one. <laughs> Dreams really do come true. <laughs> so, oh, man, my back's starting to hurt from sitting badly. Uh, let's see, what's this? Okay, those are all still CGC. So we got these two Rocket Return boxes. Um, if you didn't know, I'm also a big Rocket fan. So let's see what we got going on here. Can I, I might lay down. Can I lay down and go through these? I mean, we can lay down and frolic together. You guys want to lay down? Might as well. I'll lay down. Oh yeah, this is comfy. It's like we're laying down, showing each other our Pokemon card folders. So, oh here, let me uh, pull this down a little bit. Blech. Okay, so we got Azumarill 10. Some of these 10s with rocket returns are pretty rare. Meowth. Dark Flaffy. These are all 10s, so. Dark Magneton. Look at this one. One of the best cards from the collection is the uh, Rocket Suicune EX. God damn, that's hot. How much did I pay for that? I paid 1.2,000 in 2021. He most recently is for sale for 3000 Now, that's not a sold price. I, I don't bother with the sold price. I just go by buy it now prices. And those go up and down. And sometimes they never sell. Sometimes one goes for cheaper in auction. But, you know, I like buy it now as a standard. It's very simple. Here's Mewtwo. I think this is the most expensive non-Gold Star card. It's this Mewtwo. Uh, Quillfish. He's pretty rare. I think he's like pop four or something. Here's Scissor 10. 
Some people don't bother grading some cards. Dark Sloking. Let's see. we we'll do this. Dark Dragonair 10. Articuno 10. That's regular Hollow Dark Steelix. Moltres 10. Ooh, check this out. This Torchic 9, like, tripled in value for me. It's really crazy. And I got that, um... Oops. Yeah, I got that, uh... Gold Star 9.5 CGC that I'm going to upgrade into the CGC 10. I'll probably just hold that. Dark Sand Slash. Here's a Mudkip 9. I'm sorry, 10 Gold Star. Did I say 9? I don't have the Trico. So I could go after the Trico. I so do not feel like I need to go after the Trico. I really just do not care. Dark Dragonair. Even this Magikarp is really expensive. There are Magikarp collectors, and he's a pretty rare Magikarp, it turns out. Sneasel. Well, see, now my arm's getting tired doing this. <laughs> I'm, like, holding my arm way out in front of my body here. What do we got? Dark Sand Slash. Dark Hypno. Dark Slow King. Look at that. He's really rare. Look at that on the back. It says Pop 8 there. I don't know what he is now. I got two of them there, so. Dark Muck. Very proud of my Rocket Returns collection. It's been worked on for a long time. And I don't care about completing the collection. I just add cards to it. Like this one. PSA 10 Rocket Returns Togetic. Pop 4 last time we checked. That's pretty rare. <laughs> Dark Electrode. And I'm, I'm just looking to add more to it, basically. I especially like any Pokemon card in the collection that says Dark. Like this Dark Golbat. Golduck, I mean. Look at this Cubone. One of the best-looking Cubones in the Pokemon hobby, in my opinion. Very pretty. So cool looking. Rocky Cubone, come on. Dark Tyranitar. Okay, let me sit up. <laughs> Laying down is like, it's okay. It, I need to do this in a chair, dude. Some back support. I'm doing this all hunched over, or if I lay down, I hang my arm in front of me for a hour. So that's one box of the Rocky Returns. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm very proud of that collection. That's like, it's really a, a vanity or luxury collection because I don't really care if it goes up or down in price. I really just like having it. Here's some more. We got another box of it. Um, but again, I especially like these ones that say dark. So if it's a Rocket rocket Returns collection and it doesn't say dark, uh, I might sell it even if I wanted to, if somebody wanted it. But I kind of don't like to sell these ones that say dark, like Dark Steelix. Look at this, Dark Houndoom. Whew. Dark Gyarados. So cool, man. That's a big one. The Snorlax. Another one of the top cards from the set is the Rocket Snorlax. Now, this one's actually from EX Deoxys, but it's still called Rocket Raikou. Pretty neat. So I just put them here in the Rocket box. And, uh, okay, Dark Golbat. Oh, my God. One of the best parts of my entire Pokemon card collection is my position in the Dark Dragonites from Rocket Return. Check this out. <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. There's a 9 somewhere. So that's 6 of them. Damn, dude. 10 Dark Dragonites from Rocket Returns. I know there's another. Oh, here it is. So there's the nine. So a total of seven slabs. Um, the nine's not that impressive, is it? Because nines are just nines. But these are crazy, man. Because you can't even find them for sale half the time. You cannot find these for sale. And look at the prices I got on them. 1.7. $250. That's right. You're reading that right. $250. You realize this is probably going to sell around $8,000 one day, right? Because that's where he's going. I genuinely believe that. $250. Thing is, I actually remember these purchases. I made them a long time ago before anyone was even talking about the Rocket Returns collection. And they were both listed up on eBay, and I bought them at the same time. Uh, here's Rocket Returns 10, but I paid two point five for that one. One of them I paid 4000 for. Uh, look at this. Look at this, $350, my God. But yeah, one of these I paid about uh, 4,000 for. I was in a negotiation with a guy, he's a big card collector. And he said, all right, I'll give you four. <laughs> 4,000, I was like, oh yes, 4,000. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, let's see, is there a last recorded price? There's not, because there's none for sale. There's none for sale. So, you know, you can't even write down a buy it now price on it. And um I think when you look at other really rare Dragonites, because this guy's low pop. He's like pop 39. That's pretty low. 
And considering I'm holding six of them, that means you really have access to more like just 33 of them in the actual market. Um, when you look at a Dragonite that are pretty rare, they do tend to reach prices like six, 8,000. Even some are listed around 10,000. It's pretty wild. Uh, this is definitely not a sell, it's a hold. And I'd like to add more Dark Dragonites to that collection. So if you have one, reach out to me. All right, what do we got? We got Dark Dra dark Tyranitar, Dark Octillery, Scyther, Dratini, Dratini. Look at this cute little Magby. He's got the golden letters, so he's considered a rare pull in this set. So they made Magby a rare pull in this. Very cool. Azumarill 9. That's because last time I checked, there are no 10s of the Azumarill Reverse Hollow. Isn't that wild? And there may never be. And here's a Dark Hypno. Dark Hypno, he's one of the cheaper cards in the set. There you go. I like Dark Hypno. When I was uh, when I played Pokemon Blue, I had Alkazam, I had Hypno, I had Gengar, well, I had uh, Haunter. Actually, I had Kadabra and, and, and Haunter because for a long time, I didn't know how to evolve them. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder and they're like, uh, you have to trade them. I was like, what? I got them all the way to like level 100 before figuring that out. <laughs> the Alkazam actually made it to level 100. I grinded it out. I'm like, this guy just doesn't evolve. All right, another expensive box. Um, these are Japanese cards, I think. So Cardos, Cardos. Look at this. We got Misty Cubone. I think I have three of those, don't I? I think there's another one somewhere. Get them together real fast. So Misty Cubone is like Pop 9 or something like that. And I've got three of them. Uh, here's regular Misty. I could have sworn I had three of them. I think I do have a third one somewhere. I think I had it for sale. But this Misty Cubone is very cute. And, and the girl cards and the Pokemon card hobby are doing very well right now. Um, if the population on this Misty Cubone doesn't climb, I think it's going to hold a premium. It's going to hold a high price. And we're not really seeing the Cardos car, cards uh, climb in population too quickly. So it's very possible they stay that way. Here's another Sealed Off 10, Mr. Fudin, uh, Dark Espeon. Look at this sexy beast. Man. So this comes out of Dragon Blast, also known in English as Dragons Exalted. We are doing pack breaks on Dragons Exalted, and if you pulled the English version of this and it graded 10, dude, you're probably picking up like a $5,000 slab from that because this is such a good-looking card. It's absolutely bonkers. Now, I picked this one up for $120, and it was $680 last time I checked. That makes sense for the Japanese version. The English version, though, probably going to go for so much money. I don't know. I haven't even bothered looking for it. I could be wrong. Here's a Gurren City Gym Deck, Bla uh, Blaine's Arcanine. He's got perfect squirrel placement. No Ready Growlithe 10, Moltres. Some of these beautiful Expedition Mews. I think I got a third one somewhere. There's a 10 Venusaur, uh, Umbreon. So these Japanese cards, they, um, they just don't sell for as much money. They're always cheaper. Unless you're talking about really specialized stuff like these Cardos cards. Ooh, this card's done very well for me. Karen's Umbreon from the Versus collection. Let's see. I, I think somebody has one of them in Slab Away. But I was picking them up for like $1,900. And it looks like he's last priced at 2.7. So this card has done very well. That's because Espeon's basically like Charizard. Everyone just wants it. Uh, some perfect grades here. We've got Darkrai, Garchomp, Mini Mini stickers from uh, Sealed Os. Very weird. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just got it for cheap. Oh, I, I just got a, a message. <laughs> got to read those messages. Cardos, Moltres. Look at that. I'm like, don't forget about the swirl. <laughs> There's a swirl. Uh, ooh, Crystal Knight of King 10. Both of these Gengars, both of these. So that's my Japanese holdings. Japanese cards kind of fell in price a lot because it turned out they're pretty easy to grade which is sort of the problem with Japanese cards is they often turn into tents. So there's, you expect their population to rise over time and population is very closely correlated to the card price. Just how it is, just a fact. Okay, what do we got here? This says Delta Species, but that doesn't mean it's all gonna be Delta Species, but some of it will be. Two Dragonites, Flavion, Scyther, Umbreon. Look at that Blaziken from Magma. Ooh, Dra Tyranitar. I'm a sucker for Tyranitars. Ooh, two more Tyranitars, man. Yeah, I was just buying up Delta Species cards, and look at this, Holland Phantom cards, because I knew they were pretty rare. And, yeah, that's worked out. Um, they're all more expensive now, so when I go to go sell them, they don't sell super fast because of the price, but um, they were cheaper when I started. <laughs> they were a lot cheaper when I started. Holy. 
cards have gotten so expensive. Look at that red, fire red, leaf green Gyarados. I actually really like that one. Delta Species Rayquaza, that would be one I'd sell. If you didn't know this, I'm not a huge Rayquaza fan, but I know you guys are. So Rayquaza is always sort of like that kind of Pokemon card that you use as a vehicle to trade for a uh, higher value, hopefully to trade it into something that you do want. So if I can get that Rayquaza to trade in something that I do want, that, that'd be fine with me. But uh, some people out there are huge Rayquaza fans. You know, they, their first Pokemon game might have been like Ruby Sapphire, but not me. Here we go. Uh, to be honest, my favorite Pokemon is more like Gengar. I really, really like Gengar. I like Tyranitar. I do like Alakazam. I wish there were like better artworks for Alakazam out there, so... You just don't run into better artwork for Alakazam, unfortunately. He doesn't get as much love, in my opinion. How far are we into this? 30 minutes! Oh my god, we gotta go faster, man. Okay, Lunatone, Lunatone, Swampert, Mudkip, Duskull, uh, Typhlosion, Snorlax. We need better lighting. Snorlax, Pinsir. 30 minutes! These are all basically cards I purchased because they're so rare. And they're not terribly expensive cards. Oh, this is cool. This is Pop 1. Look them up. Reverse Glalie Pop 1. I've got the only one. Snorlax, Snorlax, Snorlax. When a card is Pop 1, generally people don't give it up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, Pop 10, huh? Look at this cool guy. Crystal Guardian's Blastoise. He's like the Crystal Guardian's uh, Charizard. He's hard to run into. He's, he's pretty rare. People don't even think to look for him. All right, so we are definitely running out of time. Can't be an hour-long video. Oh, my back. <laughs> it's funny, I got so much more to show you guys. That's why I was kind of like, what the hell? Okay, we got Rayquaza, Manectric. Look at that. Legend Maker uh, Gengar, I love it. Legend Maker Gengar. Perfect Umbreon. What's this guy doing in here? He doesn't, he's not supposed to be in here. Gengar, first edition. He's supposed to be in like the English English box. Hold on, you go with Oh, I know why, because we got a bunch of Gengars in this box. That's why. Okay. We got a bunch of Gengars in this box. I need to get closer to the light, man. We need more light. Let's get back here. Come on now. There we go. Holland Phantom Gyarados. So cool. Definitely one of the best cards for Holland Phantoms. Pikachu. Rayquaza. How much value you guys think this is? I mean, it all adds up a little bit at a time. This is an error card. Uh, Kabutops. Kabutops. Kabutops a third time. I really like Kabutops, if you didn't know that. <laughs> Him on Lee. Damn, dude. Look at that Dialga. Salamance. These are all 10s. This is a PSA error. PSA error. PSA error. That's PSA making mistakes. Now, look at Tops Chrome Hollow Gengar. This is a Series 2 Silver Foil Gengar. And this is a Topps Chrome uh, Spectra Gengar. Here's Triumphant Gengar. Uh, what is this? Platinum Gengar. Level X. Here is a Graveyard Gengar from Gym 2 with a good swirl. Another one. Another one. Here's a Legend Maker Hollow, non reverse Hollow. And here is one of the cooler ones, Sky Ridge Gengar. So, yeah, I got a lot of Gengars, if it's not obvious. Got a bunch of Gengars. I just like Gengars. You know, I, I pay a, a particularly close attention to when I can snatch a card at an unusually good price. So sometimes those cards just make it to the bucket because they were priced well. And that's it. That's the only reason. So now we got these cards over here. Um, oh, my God. I can't believe it's 33 minutes in. Uh, we don't have enough time to show off all the cards. SGC graded cards. Pikachu Rumble. Pokemon Rumble. Dark Espeon. Heatran. Brock's ride on. Yeah, I pay attention to these. Look at this. Blaine's Moltres 10. Uh, I graded these. So these are Poker Charizard 9s. Unfortunately, they all came back 9. I think I might try to cross grade them with PSA, though. Look at this bad boy. Cardos Vending uh, Gengar. I'm so glad I snatched this. How much did I pay for this? Just $450. Pop 41, huh? That's the PSA pop. I bet you this card sold for over $1,000 if I tried to sell it right now. I'm not even kidding. You, you think I'm bragging, but I think it would go for that much. He's very special. Here's Cool Porygon. Oh, I actually paid $700 for this one. This is Yellow Deck Poker Gengar. And honestly, I think that's not a bad price at all because the Yellow Deck's more rare than the Blue Deck and much more rare than the Red and Green Deck. 
but people don't understand the uh, how expensive and, and hard it is to get a hold of certain poker sets. Yellow deck Pikachu. You guys have seen this. I've shown this off in the stream a couple times. So here are some poker card holds. Surfing Pikachu. You might have seen that for the first time just, the, just there. Blue poker set Cubone. See that? Crazy. I love the poker cards. I'll be collecting a lot of them over time. And I'll probably be a big poker card guy. There we go. Because I think that they're this aspect of the hobby that's been... Um, it's a niche part of the hobby, but I've got this big advantage in it already. So I might as well keep going. <laughs> black Label Espeon. That's cool. I will sell these Black Label cards at the right price. Black Label Sandshrew from Pokemon Yellow. All right, so there are some cards that would not fit in the other boxes. Now we got these CGC cards. Oh, here we go. We got a couple more over here. I think I was trying to sell these in stream. A Mew 10. Dragonite 10. Damn, dude. Gengar 10. Umbreon 10. Raichu 10. Oh, there's that third Mew Expedition. Yeah, I was doing a thing called Price to Hold, where I would put kind of a higher price on the card, and I'd be like, if you want it, you can have it. But, oh, there's the Misty. Okay, there's the Missing Misty. Uh, this Umbreon Dark Rye Alternative Art, pretty neat, from Sun and Moon Era, Espeon, VMAX. And don't laugh at the prices. You'd be surprised. People actually pay this. <laughs> so People actually will put these in the slab away on a bet that they go up in price over time, and they don't mind paying a little extra. That's a Mew 9, huh? and a Dragonite 9. All right, and, and those are probably, wait, was that 9 or 10? Yeah, 9. So those actually sell. Yeah, I've sold quite a few of those now. Look at this. Here's a box of Topps cards. Sparkle Blastoise. What's cool about this card was the price I got him at, two, just 2.1K, and he's pop 10. So I, I don't know, just got a good price on him. This is a PSA error. The card is upside down. Uh, here is a Sparkle Cubone. And then that's, I think, all my Sparkle cards, right? So I got this Spectra Magneton, Spectra Jolteon. Here's a Eevee Squirtle, Charmander Regular, another Charmander, Abra, Zapdos. Oh, this is cool. Check this out. Dragonite. I think it's from Series 2. And here is a Perfect Pikachu. So I like the Topps cards a lot. I'm waiting for the dust to kind of settle on them a little bit because I feel like there's a lot of affordable Topps to open. And what that means is people are going to be opening lots of tops up in the next year and populations are going to rise, populations are going to fall, and then you get a much better idea of the value of those tops cards. So I'm waiting, that's how I describe it. I'm waiting for the dust to settle on those. It's kind of true with the poker cards too. There's a lot of poker cards left to open up. So what do we got here? We got some CGC cards that are going to be cross graded. Some of them are better than others though. Um, some of these are real good. Look at that. Even if they're 10s already, I'm I'm willing to send them in to get the label upgrade because that other label looks fancier, so people will value that. Look at that. I got that from Matthew Fowler, actually. Uh, I don't know if it holds its value. <laughs> the Metal Charizard. Um, ever since they started grading them, a whole bunch of them have cropped up, haven't they? There it is. So I wanted to get to this. This is the Gold Star Torchic. We're going to be upgrading that into a 10. Look at the grades on it. Centering, surface, corners, edges. So... That's going to be upgraded into a CGC 10. And then we got these two Dark Dragonites as well, and this Dark Charizard, and this Mewtwo from Expedition. So that's kind of the main box for these. The rest of those uh, CGC cards, they're not as special to look at. And besides that, you're going to get to see them when they return from CGC with the label upgrade. But, you know, obviously we got four whole boxes over there. Okay, move this out of the way. I don't think I have enough time to show this to all you guys. I don't want to be streaming for or making this video for a full freaking hour. So this is a big box. This box is worth like over 100000 I think. Actually, I'm not sure if it's 100000 That might be an exaggeration. This box is a big deal, though. Because it's full of my graded booster slabs. And those sell for a lot of money. Those are three tens, Lost Thunder. So these are for sale, too, by the way. We just have to discuss pricing. That's an Expedition Japanese pack. Now, these are graded 10, and they're in the old holder. Old holders aren't as popular as the new holders, but they still sell, actually, believe it or not. Because at the end of the day, what's inside of them is a booster pack. So the, their bottom price would be the actual value of the booster pack itself. But, you know, when they're graded 10, people put a premium on them still. So like this one, first edition base set. See that? 10. See that? Folded over, but <laughs> to PSA, it's a 10. Uh, let's see. This just came in the mail the other day. Where's the... Um, Oh, there it is. 
Probably the crown jewel right here of all the great Ibushi packs. That's the first edition PSA 10 base set Shadowless pack. How cool is that? Very cool. I don't know what that's worth. I've heard numbers like 12,000. I don't know. Team Rocket Returns. That's a pricey. That's a special meatball. I got this card at a weirdly low price. It was like $400, which is weird because uh, normally the raw pack sells for $650, so you'd expect the graded 10 to be costing a lot more than that. Dragon Frontiers 10. I had to buy this. Look how good this is. That's so cool. I had to buy that. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Uh, here's a Rocket Japanese 10. So we got, this is really solid stuff, like this right here. Foil Pack Lapras. Here's Aerodactyl 10. Um, here is just a regular base foil Charizard, but actually he goes with this Blastoise. And there's a Venusaur in there too somewhere. Uh, here is a base set 10 Japanese pack. Those are pretty valuable, I'd argue. Um, so we just got tons of these in here, but... Man, we're out of time, dude. Look at this. Fiend 40-minute video. Jesus Christ. Here is a 10 of the Neo Destiny. Again, these are old packs, so you expect to get them at a bit of a better price. Um, at the end of the day, though, it says PSA 10 on it, and I think people care about that. Can you cross-grade these? Like, not cross-grade. Can you upgrade them? Can you send them back and tell PSA, hey, give me the 10 on this? I wonder if they'll do it. Or does it leave a little fold in it? I don't know. Maybe best not to mess with it, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's the same booster pack, and it is preserved, uh, which is what you want, right? So there's a lot of these out there. There you go. All right. And again, I don't expect them to sell for less than the price of the actual booster pack, because it is a booster pack, you know what I mean? Uh, we have them on this side. Just have tons of these, man. Whew. Yeah, I've been acquiring cards for a while. Here's a Mysterious Mountain. That's pretty cool. That's Sky Ridge. Uh, Rock Returns. Fossil. I I'm honestly not in a rush to sell them because these have really only gone up in price um, as the booster packs get open. These are a really weird thing to collect, you know, because as the booster packs get open, the price on these booster packs just go up all on their own. Like, you don't even... Who cares about the grading? The booster packs themselves become more rare, and so the price goes up. But what's cool about it is these are also a preserve, kind of like a preservation of those rare booster packs. So people go, oh, yeah, I get it, I get it. So while everyone else is destroying the booster packs by opening them, you've got some that have been preserved for the future so that you can always look back on them. All right. Yeah, we like this new design on the slab holder. Wait, where'd the super expensive pack go? I want it to be on top. This guy's got to be on top. So I can always point him out real quickly. So there we go. I, I don't know if that's 100,000, actually. That might have been an exaggeration. It might be like... But, you know, this one case might be like 70,000. It's ridiculous. It's a lot of booster packs. You know what I mean? And then this guy, he adds quite a chunk to the value of that box all by himself. What a good boy. All right, so I got to show you that. Um... Uh, we got this huge box of regrades here. You see this? And you cannot underestimate the value of the regrade box because there's some cool stuff in here. Like, look at this. PSA did not give me an error on this card. See that centering? Look at that centering. They, they gave it a four. <laughs> okay. Fine. I got you. I'm sending it to CGC or something because it's probably not. A four. It's, it's, it's an off-center card. I don't know. Maybe it's on the threshold. Maybe it's on the uh, tipping point. Uh, just got this poker card here. I like that a lot. Those poker Charizards. I'm trying to collect those. We got some first editions of cards here. Like this one right here is actually pretty pricey. It's probably like five, six thousand dollars $6,000. We want to try cross-grading them to another company to try and get it to go to seven. Because it's, it's a big enough margin between six and seven that that's worth our time. Yeah, I just got a whole bunch of cards like this. Uh, here we are. Look at this. I'm going to try and cross-grade these. Try to get those turned into 10s or something. Look at that. I don't know if the Cubone will cross-grade, but I looked him over. He looks kind of nice. So we just got a whole box like this. That graded 8. Maybe we're hoping for a 9. Same here. Maybe we're hoping for a 9 there. A whole bunch of cards like that. 
some of them might might be a waste of time or something like that. We could crack them and cross grade them. Thing is, if the if the grade goes up even slightly, uh, we we stand to make a lot of money on the change in the grade. So yes, like everyone else, I have cards where I feel like, man, if I send this to another company, will they give me a better grade on it? You know what I mean? Or if I just send it back, <laughs> grading is a subjective thing. It really is. And people have tested this before and again. You send a card to PSA, you send it a second time, it gets a better grade. And um, it's not really PSA's fault, it's just the nature of grading. Some eBay cards, I'm not even going to go through this. Some personal cards. So these are card economist graded cards that I bought back from people. Yeah, I actually bought them back from you guys and they go, oh, and they go in a little collection now. Um, over here are all the boxes that appear under the table. I was going to go through them, but this video is now 45 minutes long, so I don't feel like we got the time to do it. Uh, and there's just so much more to show off, I feel like. Like this box over here, if we'd gone through it slower, I could have shown you these are my Final Fantasy cards. So we got some Final Fantasy cards over here as well. Uh, you guys have seen the cloud. Do I got any perfects in here? Look at this one. Perfect wool. Damn, that's cool, man. So we got some, yeah, we got some. Oh, there's a uh, Adventure Time. That's cute, too. There's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Tri-Brigade. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Starlight Rare Zeus. Cool. He might be worth cross-grading, actually. If he turned into a 9.5, that's a big upgrade, right? All right, guys, I hope you had fun. See you later. I'm, I'm just going to upload this at this point, and um, we'll show off more slabs on another day, okay? Uh, next month, we'll not talk as much about my personal collection of slabs. We'll actually focus more on the slabs that are for sale for, like, the table, right? Because that was my goal today, but we ended up just showing off a bunch of my cool slabs. So I'll show you more next time.